Hello and welcome to this video on chi-square tests of model fit in latent class analysis in M+. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to latent variable models and often related to the M+ software. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also if you like this video then please hit the like button and don't forget to check out the description for additional free resources as well as other workshops that I offer. So in this video I want to talk about something that confuses a lot of people who run latent class analysis in M plus or in other software programs that can um, do these types of analyses and so that is about model fit testing specifically about chi-square tests of model fit and so I want to walk you through the M plus output here in terms of the chi-square model fit tests for LCA and um, when doing that, I want to point out some of the issues that people are confused about, and I want to try to clear up some of that confusion for you. So here I have a standard classical latent class analysis model with binary or dichotomous items. Specifically, I analyzed 12 items here. So the number of free parameters in this model here is 64. It's a five class latent class model for 12 binary variables. And so when you run something, like that in M plus you get in um, as part of the model fit output you get the number of free parameters so you can check that the model was estimated in the way that you wanted you get a log likelihood value and you get information criteria and then below that you find two different chi-square tests of model fit move up again So here you can see the first one is a Pearson chi-square test that here has a value of 5012 and we have also a likelihood ratio chi-square test the value of which here is 680. And so one thing that many people are confused about is first of all how would these be interpreted and so the interpretation of chi-square tests of model fit with latent class analysis works in the same way as, for example, when you have a confirmatory factor model or a structural equation model. The tests um, allow us to test the null hypothesis that the model fits exactly in the population, so to say, in conceptual terms, or we could say that the model reproduces the observed data um, adequately and so if that's not the case if there's a discrepancy a statistically significant discrepancy between the model implied data structure and the observed data structure then those tests would be significant and then the model would be rejected and so specifically you can look at the p-values for these statistics and the p-values allow you to assess that null hypothesis of perfect fit when the p-value is very small let's say for example smaller than 0.05 then the null hypothesis of exact model fit would be rejected. And in this case, you can see the Pearson chi-square test has a p-value that is 0. 0.0000, so it's smaller than 0.05. It's very small, so according to this statistic, the model would be rejected. Now, when we take a look at the likelihood ratio chi-square, you can see that for the same model and the same data, the p-value for this likelihood ratio chi-square statistic that assesses the same hypothesis of exact model fit is 1.0 here. So it's the exact opposite, basically. It's like it tells you the exact opposite of the Pearson chi-square statistic, namely that the model fits perfectly. And so this is something that obviously uh, confuses a lot of people when they run latent class analysis for the first time or even when they've already done it before and they run it again for another a data set and they find something like that, people find it very confusing and it's uh, obviously confusing because what, what do you do now and how do you interpret these? And so I want to give some answers to this issue and also explain to you why you find these very discrepant results here in this example. So in this example I have 12 binary items and a sample size of 519, so a relatively decent sa sample size and definitely a sample size that would be considered large enough for most latent class models given 12 items, so that should work, that should be fine, but as a result of this relatively small 
sample and the relatively large number of items, again a sample of 519 and 12 dichotomous items, I have an issue here that is re often referred to as data sparseness. So there is sparseness in the response patterns, meaning that the response patterns that were observed are limited. So there is a certain number of model implied um, response patterns with 12 items and uh, actually a large number of patterns that um, are expected under the model. And now many of these patterns were never observed because with a sample of 519, you can only observe so many patterns. And then of course, there are some patterns that are very frequently observed and other patterns that are not observed or very infrequently observed. You can all actually check that um, by looking at the so-called TEC10 output for latent class analysis in M+, where you get the model implied response pattern frequencies and the observed response pattern frequencies for each pattern of responses. And so you have a separate video on that topic that you can check out and that I'm linking in the description below. And so if you looked at that for this data example here, you would find that many patterns don't have a very high observed frequency. And so that causes an issue for those chi-square statistics of model fit. It does not cause an issue necessarily for the parameter estimates of your latent class model. So when you look at the profiles, the conditional response probabilities, or the estimated class sizes, those might be fine. You might find a solution that is perfectly reasonable. However, this data sparseness issue that has an implication for these chi-square statistics. And specifically, it means that those aren't interpretable in this case, because the p-values, or I should say the p-values are not interpretable. The statistics as such are okay, but you can't interpret the p-values because of the data sparseness issue. So that data sparseness issue leads to a violation of an assumption an asymptotic, so to say, uh, assumption for the chi-square statistics. And so the assumption is that each model implied response pattern is observed sufficiently frequently. Otherwise, these chi-square statistics do not follow the theoretical chi-square distribution. And as a result, the p-values are not trustworthy. And that's exactly what we're seeing here is that either the Pearson statistic or the likelihood ratio statistic do not follow the theoretical chi-square distribution. So, and therefore, these p-values here, either the Pearson p-value or the likelihood ratio p-value, or both, are invalid. They're not interpretable. They're not valid because they're based on a different, or they're based on the theoretical chi-square distribution, but the statistics that we observed in our sample here are not distributed as a chi-square. And so, how can you see that? So in which situation would you be able to figure this out? And so always when these statistics are very discrepant, so when you have very, very high discrepancies between the Pearson and the likelihood ratio statistics, like in this case where one is over 5,000 and the other one is uh, 680, it means something is wrong and you have a problem probably with data sparseness. In contrast, when you find that these statistics are very similar, then it's more likely that you can trust the p-values. So that would be the case if you had a huge sample and not so many items so that all of the uh, response patterns that are expected under, model, under the model were observed with a reasonable frequency. And so then you would find that those statistics have similar values and that would make you feel, so say, better about interpreting these p-values. Now, what can you do about it? What should you do about it? So first of all, the first thing that you should really do is not interpret these p-values. So do not take them and report them in a paper and say, oh, according to the likelihood ratio statistic, my model fits perfectly because the p-value was one. That would be totally wrong. And it's actually bad because a reviewer might not pick up on it. Yeah? So or editor, they might not know latent class analysis and they may not understand that this is, a, a, this is an error a, or an erroneous conclusion. So that's the first thing. So don't use these statistics or at least don't use their p-values in that case. Now there is a solution to this issue that can be uh, um, used. So say a, a non-parametric alternative to using these p-values, you could use a so-called parametric 
um, or I shouldn't say non-parametric, where you should say you should you could use a bootstrap approach that uses a parametric bootstrap to uh, determine the adequate empirical distribution for those statistics, specifically for the Pearson statistic. This has been shown to work when you run a parametric bootstrap. You can generate your own empirical chi-square distribution, and then you could um, obtain a valid p-value for the Pearson statistic. However, this is something that isn't implemented in the M plus software. It is implemented in other programs for latent class analysis, but not M plus. So in M plus, you would have to run a Monte Carlo simulation study to simulate that chi-square distribution. So it's all very complicated. And so what you can do instead is just focus on other fit statistics. So you could, for example, focus more on model comparisons. For example, the BIC index can be used for comparing models with three, four, five, six, and so on classes, and then you could determine the model that has the lowest BIC value. There are also chi-square statistics um, uh, for comparing different models that have adequate bootstrapped p-values in M+. This is something that can be obtained with the TEC14 output in M+. So there are alternatives to these fit statistics. So, but definitely don't use the p-values as they are given here when these statistics are very highly discrepant, like in this case. In that case, it really makes no sense to interpret those p-values here. Now, this doesn't mean that your latent class model is invalid. It doesn't mean at all that you can't interpret the parameters of the latent class model. They could all be fine. This is just about these fit statistics. And in fact, that is the case here in this um, example application that the class model that I estimated here makes perfect sense. It's perfectly uh, reasonable to use it, but it's not reasonable to use these asymptotic p-values that are given here for these statistics. So in summary, when you run a latent class analysis and you find that these Pearson and likelihood ratio statistics in M plus are very, very different, then don't look at those p-values. Just simply don't use them and use other fit statistics for um, figuring out which latent class model you should use. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and check out the description for additional resources, and I'll see you next time.